Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video we're going to take a close look on the Ishin 250 Pro version. First of all I would like to say thank you Banggood for providing me this quadcopter for a review. This upgraded version is lighter and more powerful than the original Ishin 250 which was actually my first racing if you can call it a racing quadcopter but it was the first racing quadcopter i bought over a year ago this is the plug and play version which means it comes without a receiver transmitter battery and a charger so i'm going to use my own fr sky receiver and fly it with my Terranis. so let's open the box and see everything we're getting inside inside we got two sets of propellers these are 50-48 dry blade propellers. We've got the quadcopter, we're gonna review in a minute. An RCP cloverleaf antenna. Wires for connecting the receiver and this double-sided Velcro. We've got the instruction manual. So let's have a look on the quadcopter. On the front, we have the 1000 TV line CCD camera. And on its sides, we have three watts headlights which are very strong and they also give this quadcopter its unique and familiar look. The camera is mounted on a base which can be tilted and I recommend it before flying it just to fasten the screw otherwise it's probably going to wobble. On the center we have the F3 board with a micro USB port on the side which you can use it to upgrade and to configure it which we are going to do later in the video. On the back we have the 600 milliwatt transmitter, we have here this button that allows it to configure it and it also have a built-in microphone. On the back we have these three configurable LED lights which are configured by these three switches. In addition we have inside a built-in buzzer and we have also this switch that turn on and off the headlights and it can also be configured on the board so you can use a remote in order to turn on and off the headlights. In the center of every arm we have 20 ampere BLLES ESC controller. On top we have this strap so this quadcopter intend to be used with the LiPo battery on top and we have this dumping plate to place an action camera. These motors are a little bit stronger than the ones that the original one features. This one is 2205-2300 kV motors and the original one has 2204-2300 kV motors. In addition, the quadcopter is lighter than the original one. The weight without the battery is 327.7 grams and the older generation was almost 400 grams. So this is significantly lighter. Inside the accessory bag we got two cables. One is for the headlight and it connects over here next to the switch it enables you to control it with your remote controller and the second one is this PWM wire you have to connect it here next to the USB port and then you can connect a PWM receiver or you can just keep these three wires the black red and white and then you can use it on PPM mode and this is what I'm going to do on the first time you will try to configure the quadcopter, you will get a notice that the firmware is not supported and you will have to flash a new firmware. In order to flash the board with new firmware, you will have to put it on DFU mode. Just hold the boot button while connecting the board to the USB port. Then select SP Racing F3, load the firmware online and hit flash firmware. After the programming was successful, you can let go of the boot button and just connect the quadcopter and you can start configuring it on Betaflight. Betaflight configuration is pretty straightforward. I've chosen to use PPM receiver. You can see that everything is working correctly and I've already went ahead and configured all the modes. And don't forget to configure a beeper because it's going to help you to locate the quadcopter in case it will get lost. Last thing you need to do is to calibrate the EC controllers. Just hit I understand, put the master on full throttle and connect the battery. You will hear the calibration sound 
Then, after the B-pin is finished, just turn down master all the way down. And the EC calibration process will be finished. Changing the channels of the video transmitter is a little bit annoying and is done by this red button over here. So there is only one button on the receiver. Short pressing it, change the position of the LSD. As you can see, it goes down. In order to change the channels, you will have to long press the red button until it's going to reach the channel you would like it to be set on. So for example, let's say we want Fetchark F7. So you can either scan and see what is the correct band or you can just leave it on the channel that you would like to use and then just use the red button until you're going to be on that channel. So right now you can see this is C4. Now it's on C5. Eventually I got to work on F7. It's D7, actually it's the FETSOC 7. I got to work using the table of frequency challenge which I've found. So thank you Randa Houston for posting it on April 7, 2016. So it's pretty annoying if you need to switch frequencies pretty often, but that's the way it is. And Ishin, they have great transmitters, so I'm not sure why they use this old one, which they had also in the Racer 250 in the original version. So that's what they did, and it's a little bit annoying, but we're going to live with it. So before taking it for a test flight, I would like to give you a couple of advices. First of all, I recommend to use a Pictel because this VTX antenna connector is very fragile and in a crash it's going to bend or break and if it's going to break it's probably your know, VTX probably is toasted and you will have to use another one so Pigtail will probably help you a lot and will save the transmitter and make sure not to power on the quadcopter without an antenna because then the transmitter is going to be burned these arms are made of plastic so it's probably going to break Luckily, they are very easy to replace and they are pretty cheap. So if you buy this quadcopter, make sure to buy at least two more arms. All of the arms are the same, they are identical. So if you crash it, and you will, they're going to break and you can easily replace them. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to take it for a test flight with my new Wildcom 3 and also replace the antenna for this one. It's a shorter one from TVS. I think it's going to be a little bit better because I don't have an extension pigtail to use with this quadcopter. I'm going to fly with two LiPo batteries. One is this 3 cells 1300 mAh battery. It used to be 4 cells, but I had to convert to 3 cells. And I'm going to use this 1000 mAh 4 cells battery from Dynogy. So thank you for watching my review. I hope you enjoyed it and it was useful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. And I will soon post the flight test. See you on my next videos and goodbye.